Hi there, Marta Locklear here with Refine Co. Today we're going to work on some film matching. You might have watched our last video, uh, the first video in a three-part series that we're doing, um, where we took a beautiful session shot by Caroline Tran when she was teaching a workshop out at Photo Native. We went through this session and called down all of the digital images. These, that's these images right here. Um, we did not go through her film. All the green are her film images that she also shot while she was out there. And today we're actually gonna take these film images and use them to edit her digital to match them. So when she gives them to her client, they all look seamless and beautiful. If you missed our last video, I'll put a link up above in this little you know thing up top. <laughs> or you can check our notes below and get a link to that video down below as well. Let's go ahead and get started editing um, these images. Caroline shot these images with the uh, Fuji GFX 50S, and let's see what else we've got here. And it looks like uh, we got the 110. I don't know if she switched around at all. Looks like she mainly stuck with the 110 F2 uh, lens on these. And um, for film, she shot with her Canon 645 with the 80 millimeter lens and Portra 160. Portra is not Caroline's normal film. She's generally a Fuji 400 shooter. Um, but at the workshop, that's what they were using. So she went ahead and went with it. So these are a little warmer than her normal work. Um, you may have noticed that. I noticed it right away because I'm so familiar with her work. But um, we're going to go ahead and match them. So I will be able to show you. That's the beauty of this. I'll be able to show you how flexible her Refine Times Caroline Tran presets are, that they can work with not only her normal Fuji work, but they can work really well with the Portra 160 work as well, and also Portra 400. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and switch here to develop mode, and let's go ahead and open up her presets. And what I like to do for film matching, sorry about that, I'll try not to get that popping up too much, is I just like to grab the image, and then right here while you're in develop, you want to click on the RA. It's going to be down here. You will not find this if you're not in develop mode. I get a lot of questions about that, so definitely have be in develop mode, and you'll see an empty spot here where you can pull up a reference photo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the timeline here, and I'm going to look for a very similar image from the same moment or the same at least lighting so I can get an idea of the light, the tones, um, the saturation, the contrast that's in her film. So it's not these ones here because she did have the bouquet. Um, it's probably right in here. That looks good. So now I have a reference. So now I know exactly where I need my exposure, where I need my temperature and my tint, and also my contrast and stuff. I know for a fact that Patina is going to be the preset for this set, um, mainly because Pure is very clean, and I can already see, um, and I can probably show you the before and after, but um, I can already see there's just a little more green in his blacks, there's a little more green in the shadows overall, and it's a very warm um, image, so Patina tends to lend that way, so I think we're going to go with that. Now you can see the digital is already very cool, it was in the shade. Um, you know, try to stick with open shade for a lot of shooting, it just for better light. So we're going to have to warm it up a bit as well. So the first thing I'm going to do, let's just go ahead and get our exposure up. And sometimes I like to try the auto and see, and that actually gets us really close. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with auto for right now. And then I'm going to click the preset and see if I need to tweak from there. So let's just go ahead and click patina. That gets us super close. Patina does have a good bit of contrast in it, and her film in this session was very light on contrast and blacks. So the adjustment I'm going to make is I'm just going to pull back the contrast. And you can see immediately how all of that softens and lifts up to look very much like her film. So I'm going to increase the exposure, and I'm just visually bouncing back and forth and looking at it. It still needs to be warmed up a little more. This is probably about where Caroline would prefer her work overall. This is closer to her edit right here. But the Portra 160 is very warm in this situation, so we're just going to warm up because we are film matching today. So I'm looking at their skin. That's the first thing I'm matching, and that looks good. And then... If I want, I can lift the shadows because we are slightly backlit here. And I'm actually going to pull a little magenta out because I feel like we have a lot more greens in the shadows, in the hair. So just by pulling some of this magenta out because there's not a lot of magenta in their skin, it's actually more warm. And that looks really good. 
So technically I could kind of copy and sync this along, but I'm just gonna keep editing for you guys as we go, and that way you can see how I do it. Oh, let me go back to this real quick. Real quick. What I would also do on this is probably add the first grain. There is some grain in this from the film. I'm not sure you guys are gonna be able to see this on the video. So I'm gonna add the first grain. And I do feel like I need to warm this up just a little more. Take a little more of this out. There we go. Um, and let's go ahead and move to the next image. And very similar to this image here, I don't need to go find another one because we're in the exact same spot just different um, pose. And you can see patina off the bat. This is where everybody gets scared. They see it and they're like, what is going on? It is supposed to be pushed, <laughs> just like film. So as soon as I lift it, it already gets better. Now we did not adjust the white balance on this, so we're going to do just that. Adjust the white balance. And again, for this set, because the contrast was pulled back quite a bit on the film, we're gonna do the same thing keep increasing this warmth because they're very warm and then just knocking a little of the magenta out to get that nice filmy kind of green tone in there and just finding the happy medium from there and I'm just slightly tweaking these just so they coordinate really well with her film and I'm going to do green and then move on and this is going to be the same so let me show you here um, what I could do here is just go ahead, Command C, I'm on a Mac. I'm just going to copy everything. Actually, I usually turn these off just in case I've done any transformations. Everything else is good. I can copy just to make editing faster and paste. Pull back the contrast. I mean, sorry, the exposure. And from here, we can just hand tweak as needed. And it looks like we could put a little contrast back in this one and then you can just tweak as needed. So from there, you could literally just bounce through them. Um, I'm actually gonna copy this one because this is a lot closer to the next image. Command paste, and you can see how we can save a ton of time just by um, copy and pasting and going through the images. So in order to do this for teaching, I'm gonna stop doing that, but I just wanna show you guys just how quickly you could go through and once you got one image edited from a, from a certain section of the shoot, you could just copy and paste and do real fast tweaks and then get through your editing 10 times faster. So it's really a time saver and a lot of people don't utilize that when they can. I'm gonna go ahead and do this because this is almost the exact same. There we go. And there we go. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and do this one and let's go find the images from here. Looks like we're right about here. And same thing, I'm gonna click on patina and you can see patina again, looks pretty scary right off the bat on this. I think this 110 has a lot of contrast in it, um, the lens. So I'm finding these are very strong in contrast. So all you have to do is pull that back if your images have a lot of natural contrast in them. And from here, I'm just tweaking the white balance and the tint and finding a happy medium. Maybe pull a little of these blacks out. And if you feel like you need to go in and hand tweak anything, um, you can do that as far as like, say skin, he's very warm. She's very warm in here. You could go in your HSL, um, let's see here, and then just punch in the orange a little. Let's see here. Let's take this to red. So I'm just looking at her back right now in the back here. And if I really want to get um, nitpicky and match that exactly, then I'm just going to go into the HSL and adjust that there. And then that gets us a lot closer to that skin. So, but with that said, I know for Caroline, she prefers it the way it was from the get-go. So, um, you know, you kind of have to decide if you want to edit it, you know, exactly how you want it. Because sometimes film, we get a little too much of something in it. So shooting both gives you the best of both worlds. And um, I really like that. So let's go ahead and go with green. Add that in. And next image. And I think we have a good face shot here. So let's scroll through. We can use this one. Patina.
increase the warmth. And because of the backlighting, so what I don't want to do is do this, because then you just blow your whole image out. And I know this is slightly backlit. The sun is coming from back here. So where I feel like I need to lift, I'm going to lift from the shadows. Because we build a very strong tone curve into our presets that allows us to lift our shadows without ruining our highlights or our, our depth. Um, and then we need more warmth in this. These scans are very warm. You can see just how warm it is in her skin. And I'm not getting the same warmth in the way the digital is shot, and it could just be because it was shot a little differently. Um, and maybe even she probably shot, let's see, 100. That's about what you would shoot 160. Uh, the f-stop might have been a little slower. Um, this may, it looks like it's the same spot, um, but the digital is just definitely coming up, translating a little different. So we're just going to get it as close as we can. Oh, there we go. Once we take some of that magenta out, that helps quite a bit there. And same thing, if I want to punch up these oranges a little, I can do that. Um, even though I know Caroline's going to want it more, this is kind of more of her palette right here. So we're going to just push it to match because we are matching today. And we can do this here. And that gets us a lot closer. There you go. His eye color is right on point. Lip color looks good. Florals are right on point. Yep, everything looks good. And another one. This one we can do the same. Increase exposure. Pull back the contrast. You know, let me go ahead and do auto on this for you guys. So you can see auto looks good, but we definitely have to warm it up even more to match the film. That looks gorgeous. Grain. And that's stunning. And let me go ahead and show you the before and after on this. So there's the before and there's your after. You can see how the skin gets nice and creamy um, and it just looks very filmy. And again, if this is too warm for you, you just pull back. Maybe add a little magenta if you like it pinker, or cool it down if you like a little more of that filmy green look. And there you go. And let's go ahead and do this one here. I think I have them on the back of the car. Where are you? Towards the end. There we go. I'm going to try Patina Warmed since we are seeing a lot more warmth in their skin. And basically that's all that Patina Warmed does is it adds extra warmth in their skin. Pull back on that contrast because these are really punchy. A little more green and a little more warmth. And that actually, I am seeing a little more of that punch in here that we're seeing in their skin on the film scan. So Patina Warmed actually looks really nice. You can see the greens are very much in the same tone as the greens in the film. And we can even warm those up a little more if we wanted to. And again, if your greens seem to be shifting in your film a little bit, you can just go in here and adjust them. And that gets them a little, because right now they were set to be cooler for Fuji. So um, you can adjust just, just adjust that there. And everything looks good. Suit looks good. That looks gorgeous. Let me go ahead and skip through because this video will be super long if I don't. So let's find something a little different. Let's go ahead and get one of these. Don't know if I have any good car ones. Oh, there's one. Perfect. And let's do warmed. Oof, you can see how patina. Ah, that's right. That's why I did that. Um, she did tell me that she had a few shots because she was teaching and busy talking and everything that were JPEG. So this is actually a JPEG image. So I, n I noticed as soon as I went here, I didn't have my full um, white balance list. So I'm not going to bother with this. I'm going to hand tweak. You can still use the presets on these. They're going to look a little more aggressive on a JPEG because JPEGs are already compressed and have some contrast and everything locked in. So what I'm doing is I'm going to have to hand tweak this a bit more um, and, and get it to work out. But we can edit a JPEG. It's just going to need a little more finesse than we would need when we're dealing with a raw file. Because these presets definitely are built on raw files because that's what most of us tend to shoot. But we do have these times that this happens. 
you have shoot JPEG, camera gets bumped, somehow you're into JPEG mode and you need to adjust from there. Um, or say you are running out of space for some reason and need to shoot JPEG, um, you can do that. Let's see here, and then I'm from here I am going to pull these greens back because for some reason on the JPEG they're not translating as well. And that gets us much closer. Lift in the shadows. And there you go, those look like they go well together. Let's go ahead and do one of these gorgeous florals. This is also a JPEG, so we're gonna do the same thing. I think I have this here, yep. And it's just gonna take a little more finesse on the white balance and everything. Let's go here, pull back. Gorgeous. Definitely a lot more warmth. And on this, the definitely the greens are just translating really different on the JPEGs than they were, say, on the other files on the RAW. So I'm going to just sit here and kind of tweak this. There we go. Now right, we're getting closer. You can see how you just have to troubleshoot sometimes. There we go. Now we're getting much closer. There you go. Let's see here. I want to try to find some different images for you guys. Let's do this flat lay. And I know we have that in here. Just past it. Now let's see if this is a raw or JPEG. It is also JPEG. So patina. Increase warmth. You can see just how much warmer the film is to the digital. Take a tiny bit of that magenta out. And I'm just matching the tones, the overall color of the image. And that actually looks really good. You could probably pull a little bit more of this out. There you go. Let's go ahead and do this one as well. And it's just nice. So I'm going to, um, let me go ahead and take that off. So this is the image itself. I'm going to edit it without and just show you. So I could probably even stop right there and that's gorgeous. There's really nothing wrong with that. It's beautiful. It's clean. It needs to be cropped. Um, but really there's not much else I need to do with that. But let's go ahead and pull up the film reference. So here's your film. Uh, we definitely had a little more reflection in here than we got in the digital. But I can see it's already a little warmer, a little moodier than this. So that's another reason to have your film is because sometimes, you know, we see this and we're like, that's great. That's perfect. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want this more gritty film look that's on the left, then we need to edit towards that. So I'm going to pull the exposure back, increase the warmth. It looks like I need to add some pink in there, some magenta. Perfect. Maybe dial this a little bit. I'm going to back off the contrast a little. And these colors, is this, oh, it's not even the same flowers. <laughs> I was like, those look so different. That one's the same. That one's the same. I think this one's different or it's flipped upside down maybe. So you can hand tweak those if you need to. Um, it looks like the magentas, um, it's interesting because the orange is pulled out of that. So you can hand tweak those if you want. Um, that's down here. And sometimes you just have to lean all the way towards the warm side. That helped a little. Got to put this back in because I lost the stamp here. Um, let me see what's in those. I'm trying to figure out what's in the flowers here. So that's where you can hand tweak and adjust in those little tiny nuances if you want to. Most clients are not going to notice the difference when they're going from image to image if they're a little bit different. They're just going to assume it's a different flower or something along that line. But that's how you would edit that. That's pretty darn close. And you can hand tweak it a little more if you wanted to. Let's go ahead and try to do a couple more. I wanted to do these here because um, this was such a stark difference. Let's see here. Where are those? I know it's on... See here, and these are not JPEG. Okay, so here's the before and after of these. 
and I'm going to use patina. Patina actually gets us really close right off the bat. And you can see how in different situations, we don't have to pull back as much contrast on this one. We did earlier in the shoot, but here we don't. So here I'm going just to increase and I can see instantly there's more green in this than this. So that's why having this reference, you can really see what's missing and what's not. So I'm gonna add a little bit of the green in. And I am gonna back off the contrast just a little, just to kind of soften it up. I'm gonna add the grain. And maybe warm just a touch. And I am gonna tweak these greens for this. The 160 is definitely not quite as turquoise or teal, I should say. And there you go. That's a really close match. Um, let's go here. There isn't an image for this, so let's just put him side by side. And I know that I need to increase exposure. I know I need to pull back because this is what I've been doing the whole session. I know I need to warm up quite a bit and take a little of the magenta out. And for him, because he's, I, I want to just lighten him up a little bit because I feel like he's very stark and in a gallery, we would probably notice that. So I don't want him being very ajar from her. So if these are side by side, I want them to flow. So if I don't have a film of him, then I can just use this and that way they would go well together, say in, think of it like an album. So if you're going to put them in an album, they would work well together there. Go ahead and do these florals real quick. Just going quickly because I don't want to make this video super, super long. Again, I know I'm warming up. And those flowers are beautiful. It's spring here, so I'm kind of very much into my flowers right now. And I think I am going to go ahead and warm this green up because that is how the film was translating. And that looks beautiful. And it goes really well with the rest of the wedding. And let's go ahead and just do one more for you guys. And then I'm going to call it a day. Let's go ahead and see if we have something. I don't think we have her stepping off. But we do have plenty of images in the same area. Let's go ahead and do warmed. Pull back the contrast. Lift the exposure. Warm it up and just hand tweak from there a little more green because it gives it that portrait 160 look let's go ahead and add some grain i think i'm going to darken his suit up just a touch here there you go and that is film matching with refined times caroline tran and we're matching portrait 160 film um, from Kodak and uh, Fuji GFX files and if you want to see our next video I am going to undo these edits and I'm going to edit them without the digital or the film and show you just how I would edit them in digital and I'm going to edit them um, in the tones that generally fits Caroline's Fuji 400 work um, with no reference so I'm just going to use my eye and do that for you guys so you can see because I've had a lot of questions about how to do that because a lot of people don't shoot film. So how do you edit these without having the film? And we're going to do that in the next video. And if you haven't done so already, I would love it if you guys would take a second and hit that little subscribe button down below. Give us a follow. That way you don't miss our next video when we get it out. I'm going to try to use this wonderful quarantine time we're in <laughs> to knock out a bunch of videos for you guys. Thanks again for following and watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.